So we're going to change the front bearing on a 95 Ford Windstar. This is a front wheel drive Ford. This wheel bearing change is going to be a pressed bearing. So you could use this method on most pressed bearing cars. With the car on the ground, you're going to take the axle nut and loosen it using a 30 millimeter socket. So now, now that's loose. Now we can lift the car. Make sure you have the back wheels chopped off. And now we'll take the tire off. And we'll put the tire under the vehicle for even more protection. We're going to end up wanting to get in here. So we're going to have to take the, the brake, the whole brake system off, caliper and bracket. To get to, uh, to get the caliper off, the whole bracket and everything. So you want this whole thing to come off as a unit. There's a bolt here, which you can see, caliper. And then there's a bolt at the bottom, right there. I suggest using a little bit of PB Blaster or liquid wrench on all these bolts that you're going to be taking off. Because they're going to be hard to take off, especially if they haven't been touched before. The caliper bolts are a 15 millimeter. Now it's time to use the breaker bar. So now the bottom one is broke. Time to get to the top one. Now once you start finishing the bottom bolt, unscrewing the bottom bolt and you pull it out, the whole assembly here is going to want to fall off. Okay, so now you have your whole assembly off here, which makes everything really easy. Now we're going to hang it. I'm just hanging that, like that. And I want to make sure that this brake line isn't bent or kinked or anything. You don't want to damage that. Now we can take off the rotor. We're going to get the axle nut off the rest of the way. And that's your axle. There's going to be a little washer right here. Just gently take out. So we turn the tire so we could get access to the lower control arm here. Uh, there's the ball joint that connects the lower control arm. And we want to take that off so that we could take the axle off. Use the breaker bar again. There we go. This is an 18 millimeter ratchet. There's a bolt on this side as well. So you need to hold on to this bolt as you spin that one. So this is going to be easier done with the air gun. Bolt came out. There we go. I wedged a screwdriver in here to open up this gap where that, you know you normally close it down with that that bolt. And then I just used the crowbar up against the frame right here and push down and now that's off now we're gonna pull the axle out so we got the axle out of the way we're disconnected from the ball joint on the bottom control arm now we're gonna take off the tie rod so at this point we're gonna go take the castle nut off so we have to get the the pin out of here Pull that through using an 18 millimeter. Comes right off. Now we take a hammer. Pop that off. There's the next bolt that we're gonna get to. It's gonna take off this, sh this knuckle from the strut. We're gonna get the uh, ABS sensor cable out of the way. This is an eight millimeter. The strut bolt is a 21 millimeter. So we're gonna wanna remove the ABS sensor. Kinda just push it with your thumb. Don't hit this, don't do anything to break this. These are kind of expensive. I tied the axle out of the way so that it gives us more room to try to shimmy this out. Okay, the whole hub is off. Now we could get to the, the bearing in here, pop it out, and 
put the new one on. So we're gonna take off this C-clamp or split ring or whatever it's called. There's a split ring in here. Just use the pliers. There you go. So that's out. I got the 30 millimeter ratchet to pop off this part first. So I'm gonna hit it with a hammer. Okay. Now this is out. So there's a, a lip right in here. You can see where the bearing is. You find the right size tool, the right size bearing press. You put it in, drop the bolt in, and now you find the right size bottom piece, which fits on the outside of the bearing. Like so. You play it on top, your washer, screw this down. So get your large socket. You want to tighten this baby down. Okay. Finally. The bearing has been completely pressed out. You're going to add some new grease, not a lot, just enough to help the new bearing slide in. Just a little bit, not a lot. This side fits in better. So then we're going to have all our bearing press kits. You see this fits perfectly on the bearing. I'll just show you real quick. So that it sits on the outside edge, so when it presses, it presses on the whole bearing. So you don't crimp anything, you don't mess anything up. That's what you want to make sure you have. So that's going to sit like that. So after you get it in there a little bit, now you have enough of a thread to put that on and then put the big bolt on. And this just slowly presses. Okay. So there, it's getting hard to turn. Tighten it down. You don't have to go too crazy, but you want it to be snug. We don't want to damage the bearing. So we look here, and that little C clamp thing that goes, that's going to fit in there, C ring, is going to fit perfectly. And then over here, we can see that this fits very nicely as well. So the bearing is pressed. Now we're going to press the hub on. The spindle is going to fit in the knuckle, in the bearing, like that. So we're going to press that way. We're going to add just a, a tad of grease on here. So here's our little C-clamp that's going to go in here. There's, there's a little groove that it fits into. Just like that, and that's in. I had to get a new bearing press piece that fits this, and we're actually going to hammer this in lightly. Just like that. Now just tighten this down. Same way we did the press the bearing. Beautiful, look at that. So, here's how far you'll tighten it. You want to barely be able to get a flathead screwdriver in here. Now you just do everything in the reverse order to put this back on, which I will show you if you want to watch it. If not, then uh, you know how to press a bearing. So let's do everything in the reverse order and get this wheel back on. strut is in, so with the strut on, we're going to get the axle back in. Okay, so that's locked in, because you could turn this and it turns that. So the spindles are lining up. So let's get the, uh, the lower ball joint in right now. that in and tighten it down. Now we're not going to tighten all the way, we're going to just tighten it so it's snug and then we'll torque it later after we get the, uh, the other bolts in. So now let's get the tie rod in here. That should slide right in just like that. 18 millimeters again. Get snugged on there. Good. This one's pretty simple. It's a threaded bolt. Get the strut bolt in. 
Now everything's in. Let's torque everything. I'm gonna do the castle nut on the tie rod first. So I set the 46 and you tighten until it clicks. Just like that. When it clicks once, you do it again. And then that's tight enough. Remember that you have that cotter pin. And then open the cotter pin around the nut like that. This ball joint is 52 foot pounds of torque. Good. And then now we want to set the strut bolt to 100 foot pounds of torque. Put your rotor back on. So the caliper, good. The caliper should slide on like that. And then you get your bolt. Top one in. Bottom one in. Snug the top one. And then snug the bottom one and then tighten good. Now's a good time to take your sensor and put it back. Goes right there. Get it on there good so it doesn't fall off. Now the last thing we have to put on is this washer, which goes on like that. And then your your bolt. This gets torqued to 200 foot pounds. So I'm um, gonna just tighten this so that's really tight on here. That's not even 150 foot pounds yet. You just want to make sure that that's tight so you can put the tire on. You just want to tighten these up. And now we're gonna torque it to 200. Now, go for a nice, easy ride and make sure everything's good and you're done. You just change the wheel bearing. Like the video if it helped out and subscribe if you want to see more how-to videos.